I'm delighted to be here at the Lees Theatre in Cambridge for what is Cambridge Handel Opera's first production with Handel's Rodelinda, and I'm delighted to be working here with Max Hearn. And it's wonderful to be on the set at the high table. Yes, well, uh, the, the whole opera takes place in this um, rather the poisonous atmosphere of the royal court of uh, Rodelinda, Bertorido and, and Grimoaldo. Death, violence, intrigue are always present, uh, even when the music is devastatingly beautiful. So the production takes its cue from that um, peculiar combination in Handel of extreme beauty and uh, extreme pain, often happening at the same time. So we're playing with uh, quite macabre, grotesque elements of, of violence, but uh, also presented in quite a, a stylized, uh, we hope, beautiful way. famous piece perhaps returned to me, the dearest husband, when Rodelinda discovers that Bertorido is in fact alive. This wonderful recipe for which says, perhaps my heart beats for joy, perhaps for anguish. And I think that's a sort of, you know, there's that sort of tension within the music as well, where it's not, it avoids it being sentimental in a way. I think it just gives it that sort of transcendence. The number that really uh, introduced me to Handel was um, Io Tabraccio, I, I Embrace You, as we're doing it in English. Um, and uh, well, it's, it's a Handel duet, which in, in these operas is obviously a rarity, but um, it, it's, it's terribly beautiful and terribly painful at mm. the same time. period production, we, we've chosen a, a, a very uh, loose, stylized uh, late 16th, very early 17th century period, but with a very rigid colour scheme, a red and black, um, for, for most of, of the show. Colours of death. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They're, they're elegance, uh, seductive, as well, yeah. as well as being dangerous. And um, that I've, I found that quite liberating. I mean, the, the brief was very much, we, we don't want a, a generic war zone or... Um, just lots of people wandering around in suits with hands in pockets. <laughs> interesting you said to me is that the costumes give a certain decorum to the singer so there's sort of one has a natural gestural language within the, the costumes they wear and I think that's a wonderful sort of part of seeing the drama come alive in yeah. rehearsals and I think also with the orchestra we're playing on period instruments in a format which is 18th century in style you have pictures of an orchestra like this in from Turin for instance and I think in a way we're just trying to find a way of marrying up the music with the drama so that one feeds into the other. Yeah, and there are many ways of, of doing that, whatever 
period it is, but um, this way I hope as well. It's uh, you know these, these are uh, these operas are vehicles for great great singers and great singing, and um, it 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 can help give it that uh, sort of larger than life quality that it needs, so that there these transcendent moments really pop out. The extremes of emotion permeate this whole opera. And it's just trying to find that rawness as well as that beauty in the music and the drama, which I think is so compelling. I swear that he shall die, that he shall die. 